to their screams. Greetings, ghouls and creeps, and welcome to Listen to Their Screams, a horror podcast. I am one of your hosts, Dave. I'm joined, as always, by Ike. Ike, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Dave. Aha. What was that supposed to be? I don't know. That's that's my uh, fuckboy impression. Ah, uh, okay. Well, very well done, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not sure why that's applicable, but okay. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so be it. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully you st- uh, are still here after that. Um, <laughs> and if you are, wherever you're listening to us, make sure you subscribe to us. And also, while you're out there, uh, seek us out on social media and give us a follow. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and TikTok. Just look up Listen to Screams. That is Listen, the number two, and Screams. Uh, as always, thank you to our wives, Monica and Kayla, for all your help, support, research, etc. cetera. Uh, those two will be back on within a few weeks to do another wise rebuttal. Uh, cannot wait for that. But, uh, <laughs> And as always, you'll hear it again later, but we are going to issue right up top a spoiler warning. Uh, We do discuss movies in this podcast, and in those discussions, we don't worry about uh, spoiling plots, points, etc. So you have been warned. So, Ike, we are official. As of the day of this release, which this is going to be released on Thursday, March 2nd, as of the day that this episode is released, we are officially one week away from the release of Scream 6, and I could not be more excited. I, I, I could not, I'm just, I'm trembling with anticipation. <laughs> I cannot wait to see this movie. No, absolutely. Um, I think it would be an understatement to say that we we are excited for this movie. I, I think that that undersells the the level of anticipation we have in this movie. Um, absolutely. You know, and and I and this kind of, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and lead into sort yeah. of uh, what we did this last week. Um, my anticipation peaked um, because I was in the same room with not one, but two, but three of our uh, Scream alum. Um, we had a convention here in Pensacola called Pensacon, um, and I got to be at a panel where I got to hear Matthew Lillard, Ski Orch, and uh, Ulrich, uh, and jamie kennedy all speak and they all spoke at length about uh scream it was a scream reunion specifically so there was a lot of scream talk and uh yeah it was really cool getting to see them and that honestly just made me even more excited for scream i mean like tenfold i was just like i'm in the same room as billy loomis and Stu mocker and oh man and and of course and of course we, we can't forget Jamie Kennedy. I was in the same room with him as well. Rose McGowan was supposed to be there. I think she got sick though. Yeah. So did uh, did anybody did anybody ask Lillard why his uh, why they've never brought Stu back? So yeah, there was actually I have a video of the the panel because that's just how I am. I, I recorded a video. It's about thirty minutes long. I meant to send it to you, but um, I, iPhone doesn't let me send thirty minute videos to you. Yeah, um, just so pop I'll probably that thing up on YouTube. That's what I was gonna say. I'll probably just pop it up on YouTube at some point and just go that route. Um, but in any case, yeah, somebody actually asked them. They're like, you know, well, specifically they were talking to uh, Ski and uh, Matt. Uh, they asked Ski, you know, what was it like coming back for this last movie, and what was it like working without Wes Craven? Um, he, he basically was talking about how you know he's you know honored to be back. He's like he's a total you know a totally different film. He said. Um, but he said it was definitely sad not having Wes Craven there, but this led to Matt saying, you know, well, Hey, Stu's still available. And the entire crowd was like, Ooh, what's that supposed to mean? Um, so I, I don't know, maybe he was just fucking with us, but the way he said it, it kind of made me feel like maybe Stu's still alive. And like, I don't know, I have my theories about this next movie, so I won't start on that, but, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm hopeful, but I say this every movie. Um, but and again, there have there have been a, supposedly some leaks online of yeah. some images. Um, we are not we are not diving into the spoiler zone with this. I'm we're not going to report them. We're not going to talk about them. Um, I don't. I, I I have done my best. I have I, I have inadvertently seen a little. I don't know. Um, whatever. Right. Um, but I I don't want to know. I don't want to know anymore. I don't. I'm going to dismiss it. Uh, but we are going to. We're not going to discuss leaks, right? We're we're going to uh, 
we're just not going to, right? I'm not going to get into that. Um, but what we will do at, to, to keep on the Scream topic is next episode, we are going to do a, a, a Scream special, so to speak. We are going to we're going to review the existing movies that are out there, the five movies. And, and, and by review, I mean we're going to attempt to come with a consensus uh, countdown of five to one, our favorites yeah. of the five existing. I don't think it'll be that difficult. Yeah, for us, I, I think. Well, I think, I figure we'll be pretty in line. But um, it's 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 gonna be it, the difficult part's gonna be it's like picking your your favorite children, right? Because <laughs> I I enjoy them all. Um, but we're gonna do that, right? We're gonna discuss and and rank from five to one our favorites of the series so far uh, and discuss each one just a bit. Uh, we are going to uh, then kind of do a preview of Scream Six, as in. And when I say preview, I just mean our predictions, what we hope to see, what we want to see, what we think might we might see, not discussing any leaks that are out there, just stuff that we would like to see or that we hope to see. Uh, we will do a top three. I think we're going to do a top three, our top three favorite – next. this is for next episode – our top yeah. three favorite Scream movie opens because the opening scene has obviously become an iconic part of the Scream franchise. Uh, so I think oh, yeah. uh, we, we'll rank our top three. Uh, each of us on what we what we like best, um, but we're going to just spend. We're not going to review in depth any movie per se. We're we're just going to talk about the entire franchise, and really, because once that when that episode is, we'll be recording it two days prior to it being released. The movie being released, we will be releasing the episode the day of uh, Scream Six release. So we're really doing this to just really uh, just pump ourselves up for opening night. Uh, and and the scream mania. I my I have every intention of going opening night. I just don't think I can wait for this movie. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm typically I either like to go on the you know the bargain night you know right there's a there's a a bargain night on a Tuesdays around here or I like to go early on the weekend when there's not that many people. I don't know if I can do it with this movie. I, I think I'm going to go opening night and probably I'll, I'll probably go again <laughs> over the weekend um, unless the movie just sorely disappoints me, which I doubt it will. <laughs> I really but, hope it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it would have to be pretty bad to disappoint me, honestly. Um, but uh, but you know, hey, let's <laughs> unless they pull a Halloween ends on us and <laughs> and really just do something convoluted. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's that's what's coming up. And then of course, on our episode that will release March 16th, we will give a full review of Scream Six. We will both have seen it by then, yep. and uh, we will talk about it in depth. And we will give a review, and uh, we will also have a top three on that episode where we will each discuss our top three favorite uh, scream kills, uh, not opening the opening scenes or whatever, but just specific kills in the franchise. And we will see if anything from Scream Six will uh, slip into our top threes. Uh, Very so, interesting. yeah, so Very that's what's <laughs> what's coming up. We are in full scream mode, uh, but today we're going to discuss Cocaine Bear, and uh, a movie we both saw that is in theaters now. Uh, but Ike, besides seeing Cocaine Bear and going to Pizzacon, did, uh, did you have a chance to watch anything else? Honestly, um, I'll, I'll be real. Not really. Um, Pensacon was was a pretty much a whole day event. You know, I, I went. Uh, I actually I donated blood. They had a blood donation drive there, and I figured, why not? Uh, you know, give back a little bit. And uh, so I donated blood. So it was kind of a whole day thing. So I didn't really get to do much. And Honestly, Sunday, I had to, like, go back to being an adult and, like, go do stuff, you know, go go shopping and stuff. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And and in full disclosure, right, you went to the you went to the the, the con and I asked him, oh, send me some pictures. Right. How's it? How is it? Everything else. And you sent me this slew of pictures or some of you know Matthew Lillard and whatever else. And then there's like this picture thrown in there of you, like, (laughs) laying on something. I'm like, what the motherfucking hell is this? And I'm like, tell me I'm not going to see something I'm something I shouldn't (laughs) see here. And you're like, oh, yeah, I gave blood. I took pictures. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm glad that went that direction because it it was weird because it was like this picture of you laying there. That was your legs. And I'm like, oh, my God, where is this going? (laughs) Thought Uh, I see some weird shit. (laughs) Yeah. No, no. (laughs) But uh, anyway, but uh, well, then then here we are. This is is our thing, right? It always seems like there's one of us that is uh, that is heavy on the viewing. And it was me. I watched (laughs) like crazy this week. Um, I'm feeling much better. I've been sick, starting to finally feel better, and it's gotten me back in my groove of watching. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run down some things I want. Now, uh, part of it is I have I am in the midst of a Scream rewatch again, referring to my my 
uh, my excitement for the movie. I have I have watched Scream one through three uh, since our last uh, last discussion, our last episode. But some other movies I've seen, uh, and I believe, yeah, these are all well except for one thing. These were all kind of rewatch things for me though. Uh, I watched uh, Ginger Snaps from 2000, uh, a movie that I, I saw many years ago that I really liked. But now it has a whole new context for me because the two girls. Have you have you ever seen Ginger Snaps? Like, um, I've actually never seen that. I know what movie you're talking about, but I've never seen it. It is surprisingly a very enjoyable movie. I, it was one of those movies I wasn't sure that I would like it. I, and I I enjoyed it when I first watched it, but like I said, it has a whole new context because the two girls that play the sisters in the movie are supernatural alumni. Uh, the one girl oh. played Becky in Supernatural, and the other girl played Ava early on in the series, which she was one of the psychic. Uh, you know, yellow eye children kind of deals. Anyway, so it, it had a whole new context when I see when I, I see supernatural people and all kinds of stuff. Um, it, just put a pin in that because that will come back when we discuss Cocaine Bear. There is a supernatural uh, alum in that movie as well. And um, and then I rewatched Scanners and Scanners too. And I'm not sure what set that off. And uh, it just kind of like no pun intended popped into my head uh, that I <laughs> man I have not seen scanners and forever right i have i mean it's forever and uh, and they were fun and uh, so i went ahead and watched skinners 3 i might go on and watch uh skinners 3 soon but i got sidetracked by the the scream rewatch uh and then i i watched uh the unrated version of megan that was released um, oh i did and, watch that yeah and my thing is i didn't notice i didn't notice a lot of difference it was i mean nothing jumped out at me now i only saw megan the one time um in theaters and I don't know. Did anything really pop at you of, of what was added in uh, uh, to make it the unrated version? Am I, am I, did I miss something obvious? Um, I think the big things were like uh, during the power washing scene, um, you, you originally just basically cuts away when she starts like power washing her face. Um, so in this, the unrated version, basically they, they stay zoomed in. So you see like the skin coming off of her face while she's being power okay. washed. All right. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't realize that wasn't in the original. I guess that was odd to me that again, I only saw the one movie and I've moved on much since. So I don't know. Nothing. It's like nothing really jumped at me. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. There was something else that I noticed. It was one of the other kills. Honestly, I think it was um, the when they're in the elevator, because I don't I uh, think it, it, it zooms away when he when she cuts his throat. But in this yeah, one, it's that, just. Right on. I I did wonder about that part. I, I thought maybe that was a different because I thought maybe that was a little more a little more graphic than I remembered, but I, I couldn't recall. Uh, and again, I've only saw the original version the one time, and right. it's you know it's it's been a while. I've watched a lot since then. I've been sick and <laughs> been on a trip and ugh, everything else. So, uh, but I did enjoy that. I, I really I enjoyed Megan on the rewatch. I mean, it it was still a very fun movie to me, and um, it, I think it, it it held its own. Right? I mean. Uh, to me, I what, what did you think? I watched it for a second time. Um, I, I thought it was almost as fun as the first time. It, it was just it had a lot of rewatch value for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, honestly, I completely forgot that I watched that. But, but yeah, absolutely. It popped up on uh, streaming the unrated version. I was like, hell yeah, let's watch that. Um, but no, absolutely. I would 100 percent agree in terms of pure replay, not replay, rewatch ability. Um, I would say that it's. It's it's honestly shockingly rewatchable. Um, you know, the entire movie, there were things that I was anticipating seeing that I was exciting to see, you know. Yeah. Um, none of it really dragged for me because there are some times where I'll watch a movie and then I'll rewatch it and I'm just like, oh, this this shit's dragging. I, I'm not all about this. But uh, for for Megan, absolutely. I think it was very interesting to see a rewatch. Um, I tried to hone in on some things that maybe I didn't see the first time. Um but those kills, the kills and like sort of the weird like, you know, uh, movements that Megan makes, it just makes it for just yeah. a really cool skin crawling rewatch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, for those of you that heard, uh, look back through our archives. We did do an episode where we reviewed Megan uh, yep. with the original theatrical release. Uh, so go back if you have not already and listen to that. And and the other thing I watched is something is I, I, I honed in on specifically, right? To, I, I seek, seek that seek this out to watch. Excuse me, and that is from 1988-99. Um, there was a, a a series, a TV series called Freddy's Nightmares. Yep. That, that was that had Freddy mostly playing the horror host role, right? With these these story, these tales from the crypt type stories. Now I wasn't going into it to, to watch the whole series or anything like that, 
What I specifically wanted to watch was, and I'm an episode I've seen before, but it's been a long time. Was the pilot episode, the first episode, because it is a little different than the rest of the series, and it's kind of a a prequel, so to speak, of the Nightmare movies, and it it dives into Freddy Krueger, uh, the the child murderer slash molester in his trial, and and leading into the the vigilante persecution of him, and uh, so I was I really I it's been like I said it's been a long time since I've seen it, uh, and man it was it was very very fun. Uh, Ike, have you ever seen that episode? So I've never seen that episode specifically. I have seen the show in general. Um, I mean, back in like the early 2000s, they used to show it uh, on repeats on Spike TV late at yeah, night. Right. Um, but yeah, I've not seen that episode specifically, so I would be interested to watch that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I highly advise you to seek it. It's on, uh, oh, I don't remember which one. One of the free st- streaming platforms, you know, with commercials and all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, like Tubi it, or Freebie yeah, or Tubi. something. I, I, I want to say it's Tubi, but I'm not sure. It's one of those. Um, but it is very it's, – it's, it's, it was directed by Toby Hooper, uh, who's, you know, oh, a, yeah. you know, very well-known in the genre. And it's, it's just very well done. And it, 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 it fits right in, right? I mean, it's, like I said, it's, they, they, they're very specific where they, they show – because it's – most of the episode, it's, it's pre-burn Freddy, right? It's prior to him being murdered or killed or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but they're very cool with how they show show him. They don't show full facial shots, right? There's just you see some, you see some eyes, see some from the back of the head. So they're they're very uh, sly to not give away the whole the whole you know the whole thing. Uh, but it's very it's it's very well done and it's very enjoyable. It's just like I said, it's just whatever forty something minutes at you know an episode uh, length. Uh, but I'd highly suggest going out and watching that one. I, like I said, I didn't dive into any of the other episodes. Uh, that's what my intent. I just wanted to see that pilot episode again, and uh, it's fun. So if anybody you know is a nightmare fan uh, and enjoys it, you know it's I, to me it's kind of a required viewing along with the series, right? Because it fits right into the you know the canon, uh, you know of the of the story. So, but uh, that so that's what I watched this week. Like I said, I watched plenty of things, and um, we'll continue on my scream rewatch. I've got two more to watch, uh, and then I'll be current and caught up and ready. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's what I watched. So uh, let's transition now and let's go ahead and dive in and let's play top three. Top three. <laughs> All right. And in this episode for top three, uh, since we're discussing and reviewing uh, Cocaine Bear, we thought <laughs> it would be uh, interesting to discuss our top three favorite animals in horror movies. And um Again, none of none of these will probably be surprises, uh, at least on my list. Uh, these are movies I believe I've spoken of before that I've enjoyed. Well, at least the people are maybe not here on the on the podcast, uh, but one of them I have. But uh, I don't think anything on my list is necessarily surprising. Um, but uh, so, uh, Ike, are you ready? Have you got your top three? You ready to dive in? I th- I think so. I think I'm ready to rock and roll. All right. Well, go ahead. Let's go. Let's start with you on your number three favorite animal in a horror movie. Absolutely. Um, so I, I definitely when you when you told me top three animals in horror movies, I, I tried to my 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 basically my guidance was it has to be like an animal, like an actual animal that like it can't be like an alien bug or something like that. Because yeah. originally I was going to put Starship Troopers on mine um, oh, yeah. just because like I almost categorized that movie as sci fi horror because the thought of like a colony of alien bugs like existing is horrifying to me but anyways uh <laughs> yeah, i think i think we had to differentiate between you know an animal and a creature so to speak um, right one of mine one of mine kind of paints the line a little but I'll, I'll explain that i thought it was acceptable it's i don't yeah. think it's too far-fetched but so go I, ahead I, yeah I, I think one of mine kind of paints the line as well which is my number three the other two are pretty straight up but my number three are the spiders from eight-legged freaks um oh, yeah <laughs> so it, it basically they're just spiders that mutated basically it is kind of like the premise. So it does kind of paint the line, but they are like real like spiders. They're not like fake breeds of spiders. They are real versions of spiders. They're just yeah. big. Um, but I, I love a legged freaks. Um, it's from 2002. It's a super campy movie. If you've never seen a legged freaks, it is camp on camp on camp. I mean, it is just, yeah, but as David Arquette in it, 
and has a slew of people that you've probably Spe- never ever seen before. Or go ahead. Speaking of scream, speaking of scream, there's you know there's yeah. a. Speaking of Scream, um, it has a very young Scarlett Johansson <laughs> in this movie. Um, oh, but yeah. yeah, I forgot she was in that, yeah. Absolutely. And it's it's just, oh, man, it's just very delicious. I love yep. Eight-Legged Freaks. <laughs> yeah, it is a fun movie. Um, and, uh, like, you know, what's, one of my mottos is, you know, hell, I love my horror with extra cheese, right? I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. And um, it is funny. And I remember this when this was out. This, to me, was such a... It was such a big thing in video stores, and I don't – I mean, I don't know if it was, was a, a hot rental or a big rental, but it just seemed like it was uh, multiple copies and prominently featured in video stores at that time. I don't know why that jumps out at me. Well, um, that's what I was going to say. I, I feel like I, I specifically remember when this movie came out. Like, I was, like, maybe seven years old, but, like, I remember yeah. driving by, like, Blockbuster or Hollywood Video – um, which wow, I realized now now that I'm approaching thirty, I'm I guess I'm considered old because I you know I went to video stores. Anyways, um, so anyways, I I would drive by you know existential crisis over. Uh, I would drive by Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, and there would be like standees of eight legged freaks in the windows. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's weird. We I remember that too. The promotional marketing was on fire for this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I miss video stores. God, I miss video stores so much. I mean, right. I, I don't get me wrong. I love the convenience and the ease of, of video on demand and streaming services. And if you want to see something, you know, with a push of a button, bam, you've got it or you can own it. But there is I have so much nostalgia from, I mean, such a huge chunk of my life of going to video stores to rent games and, and videos. And what I love most is like now – where you you'll scan through a streaming service or, or, or a video on demand service, right? You're oh, what's out there now. And what's out there back then it was going in and, and walking that new release wall and, yeah. and seeing what, you know, what DVDs are saying. Oh, oh, well, what is that movie? I've never seen that movie. I didn't know that person. And, um, uh, it's such a, such a great slice of life that I wish somehow could come back. Um, and there's just, it's just the experience, right? I mean, and it was, That's it was like a, saying. It was almost like the theater experience too, right? You 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 picked out your rentals and hell, you'd get some popcorn, you know, candy, you know, microwave popcorn and candy, and it had all the novelty candy and shit, you know, that you that you couldn't find in the grocery store or the department store or whatever, and and uh, yeah, it's just such a Look, such a fun thing. You don't gotta tell me twice because my childhood was going and renting video games from the video store. Um, because I think that was probably one of the, the best things that video stores ever did was they, they rented out video games. Now I, and I have this very specific memory when I was like, I mean, I must've been like 10 years old, so I don't know what my parents were thinking, but they let me rent one of the the Resident Evil games. Um, Mm. I'm kidding. They're not that bad. They're just a little bloody, (laughs) which it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not dissing it. Uh, They let me rent one of the Resident Evil games. And I actually, I don't think my mom knew what, what she was renting me. Actually, it was my grandma. Um, you know, Dave, Dave knows my grandma. She's a little gullible. So my yeah. grandma, I don't think she knew it, what I was renting, but I rented one of the Resident Evil games. She got me candy, um, and I went home and played it. And <laughs> best memory of my life. Best Saturday of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, totally, you know, I mean, like like I said, when my childhood was when, like when the NES hit, right? Right. And, uh, and Fucking you know, video games were expensive as hell, right? You couldn't afford to you know, buy too many of them, right? That was a that was a keep your fingers crossed. You get one for Christmas kind of deal, right? But you could go and rent one for the weekend, and you know, I mean, the memories of you know going to my friend's house or going to my cousin's house, and you know, and, and, and the first thing we would do is we'd go out and we'd whatever get a pizza or get something and and, and hit the video store and rent a game. And it, the thing is, we 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 didn't give two shits what we rented half the time. It was like right. we would go in and we would rent the most weird stuff. That, you know, it's like something that I never would have bought, but it's like, hell, we'll rent it and play it. And, you know, and I, you, know, you discover a lot of games that you maybe, you know, you wouldn't have wouldn't have known about uh, by renting and trying. So that's anyway, what I was gonna say. We, that's one of the things you, you don't get to do now because, you know, it's either I spend sixty dollars on a video game or I spend it and it's a shit game. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, we got off. We got off track. Though, but anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, that was your number three. My number three, uh, a, a great, great movie. Uh, I had I, I knew this was going to be one of my three. I had trouble where I was going to place it, but it landed at three. It is from 1983. It is the dog uh, known as Cujo. Uh, I knew that was going to be on there. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows I love Stephen King movies. 
Uh, and I love Cujo. And the thought of this big, adorable St. Bernard-looking dog uh, contracting rabies and going rabid and killer is just, uh, you know, frightening. And it makes you kind of, you know, I got a little Shih Tzu and a little Jack Chi, and sometimes it makes you kind of side-eye him a little bit. And it'll be like, you know, what are you, you going to do in my sleep uh, type thing? But no. Uh, again, and as a child, you know, I mean, this comes out in 83. I'm watching, I, you know, I didn't watch it in theaters. I probably watched it a couple years later, you know, via the, the aforementioned video store rental. Uh, so we're talking, I was, whatever, 10, 9, 10, 11 years old, probably when I first watched it. Um, and, uh, man, it's terrifying, right? And especially, you know, you know, I, I've, I don't fear dogs. I've never feared dogs. Uh, I love dogs. Uh, but, you know, you see something like this and you, you know, out and about, you see a stray dog and you're kind of like, oh, wait a minute here. What are, what are you going to do here? <laughs> So, uh, but uh, I like what do you and I, I keep did they ever remake Cujo or is that one of those movies that you keep hearing talk that there's going to be a remake at some point in time? Yeah. So as far as I know, it's just the 1984 Cujo. Um, I yeah. don't recall there ever being like an actual remake remake. There have always been talks of a remake, but it, it, it's one of those Stephen King movies that never got the remake. But shit, they'll remake everything else. Um, so I, I don't think it needs that. it. Right. I was going to say, it may not even need it. Um, for, for a modern audience, I think it has a lot of rewatchability. It holds up pretty well. And like you said, I mean, it's a realistic premise. I mean, it's not unheard of that a dog would get rabies. And we know that when dogs get rabies, they do not act rationally. They can attack yeah. humans, you know. So absolutely. Cujo is, an, is a perfect example of a very realistic life, true to form I- issue that uh, could uh, could definitely be yeah. a little hairy, if you will. Yeah. No, I, I see. I, I knew there was going to be a Stephen King movie in my top three, right? Okay. It was the toss up though between Cujo or the Cat from Pet Cemetery, the original Pet Cemetery. Uh, and, that was uh, almost uh, on my list. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's creepy as fuck too. Uh, but I went with Cujo in this case. Uh, just a little, uh, I don't know, a little, a little frightening, more frightening in my in my eye. So, all right, moving on. On Ike, what is number your number two favorite animal in a horror movie? All right, so my number two are the piranhas from Piranha. Um, uh, most popular on my list. Yeah, I don't know. Like, when I was younger, because um, uh, this movie came out in 2010, so I would have been, like, I would have been, like, 15 when this movie came out. But piranhas are always been kind of like a like a mystery, right? You don't really, t- yeah. you don't really hear much of piranhas. And in reality, piranhas are nothing like the movie counterpart, for, at least from what I've right. heard. But... Growing up, piranhas are like depicted in like cartoons. They they kind of are depicted in a similar yeah. way. So growing up, you know, in cartoons, uh, hell yeah, piranhas are terrifying. But then they came out with this uh, horror movie. It is a remake. Uh, I will say there was a piranha, I believe, in the 80s. Um, but the 2010 remake is what I most think of when I think of the word piranha. And of course, it's about man-eating piranhas, piranhas that are released from the deep. And um, they basically just go out and they just eat people. I mean, and, and some of the, I would say, the visuals in this movie are pretty cool. Um, a lot of really cool death scenes. Um, the movie itself actually has a pretty interesting cast. Uh, Ving Rhames, um, who is of, uh, he's from uh, Dawn of the Dead, Pulp Fiction. Um, you know, Christopher Lloyd, Eli Roth is in mm. this movie um let's see richard dreyfus jerry o'connell which speaking of scream he was in scream yeah. 2 he, he yeah. was Derek. um elizabeth shoe so i mean it, this movie's got a shit ton of people in it it it's hilarious it, it has really cool death scenes so i mean a love the movie b i want a pepperoni yeah <laughs> uh, you, you, you got me all distracted when you mentioned elizabeth shoe because that was completely one of my first childhood crushes uh, elizabeth <laughs> shoe uh, of course, from Karate Kid, uh, yep. you know, don't you know, the Avengers of Babysitting, uh, those movies from when I was a kid. And uh, she, by the way, Elizabeth Shue has aged extraordinarily well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, piranhas are weird because I, when you when you mentioned the movie, that's the, the exactly the first thing I thought of was was cartoons and the depiction in cartoons of how they would just in like absolute seconds would devour a person or or, right. or whatever. And uh, I think what it is about piranhas is is that mystery, right? We don't we as a child, especially at that time, well, hell, we didn't know what we didn't know what piranhas were. They were exotic, and uh, they were something. And you know who we we took it at face value. That's what piranhas were. 
And because uh, we didn't know any better, right? It's not like you could go down to your local pond or stream and there's see a piranha yourself. And um, it, it's kind of like the same myths as quicksand, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, quicksand was so terrifying in, 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 in cartoons and television shows and everything else. And uh, I mean, it, you know, it just – but you didn't know any better, right? You didn't know any different. And that's unfortunately how, you know, some of your information was formed. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't seen that movie in, in quite a while. But, yeah, it's a good choice. And uh, my number two, my number two is a uh, kind of harkens back a little. It's very similar to your number three. Uh, it is from 1954. I've gone way back. It is the movie called Them, which I, I love. It's such a cheesy old monster uh, type movie, which has these nuclear nuclear altered ants in it that are just gigantic and are stealing kids and people and everything else. And um, and to see <laughs> the effects in this where they've they've clearly shot ants and somehow you know they've however they did it superimposing with the you know the multiple multiple multi shots or however they did it back then uh but it really it, it looks pretty impressive for for being something from 1954 it's a black and white movie um and it's such a such a fun movie and uh, it was one of those movies you know that at one point in time where i was going down a the rabbit hole of watching old, you know, creature movies and old monster movies and everything else and watching this and that. And, and, and I watched this one. I was like, man, that one was, that was great. It was fun. And I've watched it several times since. And, uh, I'm, you know, there's no believability and, and the thought of gigantic ants, but it was supposed to be, you Say know, for what? 19. <laughs> so yeah, for 1954, it was supposed to have a little social commentary about, you know, the, the, the nuclear war, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what they thought would, <laughs> I guess some of the, per, you know, potential uh effects that could happen uh, you know i think it was more of a uh, tried to be a statement of you never know right you never know what's going to happen uh w- with this stuff you know 10 or 20 years down the road and you know i mean I, there's obviously some truth to things like that right there's there's many things in in the world that come up and you just don't know the long-term fallout of it um but right. you know we've never seen a gigantic house size ants uh because of you know, of any kind of nuclear power or nuclear bombs or anything else so uh, but uh, I, I, I'm going to assume you've never seen uh, the movie Them. You would have correctly assumed. Um, I have never seen that movie. I have heard of them, um, but I have never seen the movie. <laughs> it, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. It, it jumps out at me. It's uh, probably not for everybody. But when I think of you know animals and movies, it, it it's one of those that instantaneously pops to mind. Uh, because, again, what was depicted is just literally giant ants. There's no... Nothing different about them. Uh, they were just giant, and they were taking people <laughs> and everything else. So, uh, the, so anyway, that brings us to our number one uh, picks for favorite animals in horror movies. Ike, what is your number one? So, all right. So, uh, th- this one's this one's kind of funny because I, I remember I, I, I saw this movie and I saw this movie years ago. And like when we talked about doing animals, I'm like, I gotta do it. I, I gotta do it. I have I have a guess of what your number one might be. <laughs> so, and I could be I could be way off. I could be way off track. Let's let's do that here. We've never done that. Let's try to pick and see if we can guess what each other's number ones are. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's, let's and see again, if we can this is either gonna a, be a this is either gonna be a very beautiful thing or it's gonna be a horrific thing. And we're gonna both fail tremendously. For some reason, I don't know why. My gut says that your number one favorite animal in a horror movie is Lake Placid. No, that is not Lake Placid. Uh, I do see, I just, love Lake Placid. I do I love that movie. I don't know why. I don't know why. Just even when we came up with this topic, for some reason I thought, oh, you're – I don't know why Lake Placid jumped to mind when I thought of you. That's so weird. Here, here's the thing. I, let me let me say this about Lake Placid. I have seen that movie so many times. Um, and, and honestly, it is one of those like so bad it's good movies in my opinion. It is. Yeah. Kind of like Anaconda. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, no. <laughs> another fun <laughs> animal horror movie. Yeah. All right, uh, go ahead though. So, so I yeah, failed on my guess. So go ahead. What's your number one? Yeah, it's not Anaconda or Lake Placid, but it is Sharks from Sharknado. Um. Oh man. 
So for people who've never seen Sharknado, Sharknado, <laughs> it, it, it is it is a spoof movie. It's supposed to be a spoof of like, I mean, I guess Jaws. I mean, or any supernatural like animal, uh, natural disaster movie. It kind of combines like all of these genres in one. It's literally about a tornado that has sharks in it. I mean, how could how can it not be great? So Sharknado is one of those franchises that started. It was completely meant as a joke. It was supposed to be funny. It developed a cult following, and now there are probably like ten Sharknado movies. Now, correct um, me if I'm wrong. Did this not be at least in the beginning? Did this not begin as part of the whole Shark Week thing on Discovery and and whatnot, or or did it just later kind of tie into it a little bit later? You you might be right because I'm pretty sure because when it came out in 2013. I distinctly remember there being like these weird advertisements like for the Discovery Channel, like in regards to Sharknado. So either it was made for like Shark Week or it was made like they started making it and Discovery's like, well, shit, let's jump on this. Why not? Yeah. Um, But in any case, Sharknado is hilarious. It's stupid. It's funny. It is sharks in a tornado. It's exactly what it sounds like. And I love it. (laughs) It, it was literally the first one, at least, was it was a, a phenomenon because yeah. it was it, it, it is. I don't know. I mean, when, when did the first one come out? When, when did you say 2013? Well, I guess that's new enough to say. It was, I mean, it was in, in essence a viral thing. It was just, I, 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 you know, in that broad sense of the term, it just it caught on. And it's like everybody's like, oh, have you seen the Sharknado movie? And it's just like everybody's talking about it. And it's on talking about it on talk shows and it. And, it, you know, it had the guy from 90210 in it. And. And everything else, and and like you said, there has been so many <laughs> sequels. And <laughs> not only that, <clears throat> excuse me, but it has spun off this whole genre of movies. Because if you look up, you know, shark, there's just like all kinds of things. There's like whatever devil shark and sh- sharks that eat houses, and I mean, it's just it has spawned off this weird, um, uh, unbelievable, whatever. It's just it's it's, it's a whole thing. There's lots of Lots of uh, takes off the Sharknado, you know, in the cheap, uh, you know, whatever B type movies. So, uh, so yeah, I would not have guessed that Sharknado would have been your number one, but <laughs> I, I actually totally forgot about Sharknado. So, so all right, here we go. Turn about fair play now. So, you, if, if I fell on my ass, you got to fall on your ass. But yep. let's see what you think. What do you think my number one favorite animal horror movie is? <sighs> so it's a toss up between two. There, there are two that are calling out to me. One of them I feel like is like an obvious guess because like I know that you like this movie. And then the other one I'm like, I, I, I feel like, so I'm just going to go with what I think is my obvious guess. I'm going to say the shark from Jaws. <laughs> you are correct. That ha, is my number it. one. Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, anybody that knows me knows how much I love Jaws. And uh, I love, you know, it's such a great movie. Uh, so well done. Holds up so well. Uh, and especially when you think about, you know, how they had to do this, right? I mean, it's essentially a robotic, you know, shark that they had to build and, and had all kinds of trouble with. And and, and the suspense of the movie, because, you know, it goes so long before you see glimpses of it. And uh, the, the music was perfect in the movie. And it's uh, just such a great, great movie. And it's one of those movies I rewatch all the time. Uh, will forever be one of my, my one of my favorite movies. Um so clearly, when I think of an animal in a horror type movie, uh, yeah, Jaws is going to just immediately come to mind, and I, I don't know that they'll ever throw anything out there that will that will they'll knock Jaws off my favorite. So, absolutely, um, Jaws is one of those. Again, it, it's one of those. Just, I mean, it, it, it's it's an unbelievable cultural icon. I mean, Jaws in of itself, like you said, it, it was an impossible movie that they somehow got made. Um, and uh, actually, Richard, speaking of Richard Dreyfus was in that movie as well. Um, and I mean, Jaws is just like it's one of those things because, I mean, if you think about like an iconic horror movie soundtrack, um, everybody thinks of the Jaws theme. Dunna, dunna. Perfect. Dunna, na, 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 na. I mean, it, it's it, it, I don't know. It's like Jaws is again, it, it, it's like this weird like paradigm where like. Every movie after Jaws, like that involves an animal, especially like aquatic animals, it, it's all just a remake of Jaws in some way, shape, yeah. or form. It's all a remake of Jaws. <laughs> yeah, and of course, like I said, the theme, 
Perfect, of course, composed by the uh, absolute brilliant John Williams of Star Wars fame. Uh, such a, a mastermind in, in, in movie themes. So, uh, absolutely. Jaws was a trend-setting movie. It was a, a huge movie. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm fairly certain. It came out in 1975. I'm fairly certain it was the top movie of the year. Uh, it, it was definitely one of, but I, I believe it was the top. And, and Jaws kind of established the, the the summer blockbuster mentality, right? That we that has gone on ever since. That you know you you hit up the the, the big movies in the summer when kids are out of school and there's uh, you know more people going to the movies and and it was kind of the first summer blockbuster, uh, which you know is, is held true as it, you know kind of been a business model ever since. And um, such a great movie, such a great movie. I, I rewatched it not too long ago. So, all right, well that is our top three. Uh, so let's uh, take a break, catch our breath, and uh, when we come back, we will be discussing news and upcoming releases. Remember, in the course of discussing movies, the host will spoil plots. You've been warned. All right, and we are back with some news and upcoming releases. And next on some smooth jazz. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh-huh. So basically, we're going to start off uh, with some upcoming birthdays. Um, oh, wait, whoa, which, wait, 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 We mentioned this last episode, but I have I just have to mention it again, though, before we dive in. before we dive into upcoming birthdays. We are recording this on Wednesday, March 1st. And I, again, we mentioned this last episode, but I have to mention again. Today is the birthday of Jensen Ackles. <laughs> and I have to say. Happy birthday, Mr. Ackles. Thank you for everything you've given us and, and your body of work and that you continue. And um, Jensen and Ackles might be the, the only uh, person on this earth uh, that my wife should should feel nervous about. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, I, I just I felt like I had to say it right. I'm such a huge Jensen Ackles fan uh, that, you know, I know this episode's out after his birthday, but it's, you know, hey, it's his birthday today while we're recording. So before we get to upcoming birthdays, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Jensen Ackles. Yes. Just in birthday. case, just in case you're listening to our little horror podcast. If he's listening to our horror podcast, uh, hit us up. Uh, come on our podcast. Uh, make us famous. That's um, right, Mr. Ackles. Feel free to slide into my DMs. Mr. Ackles. But so outside of Jensen Ackles, the other two important birthdays uh, we have March third, uh, nineteen eighty two. Uh, Jessica Biel. Uh, Jessica Biel. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That was I know what you did last summer? Question mark. Well, I think, so, yes. I think she was in that. Is that what she was in? I know she's been in other stuff, obviously. I, I, she's a pretty bad I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure isn't she, isn't she Mrs. Justin Timberlake? Is she Mrs. Justin Timberlake? I don't know. Was she? I, I feel like I feel like if we mention her, we should know a little more about her. But uh, Yeah, no, we're just, we're just jumping into this. Um, well, she was in the Texas Chainsaw remake, which I didn't know. Yes, yeah. Um, I don't know if she was in – I know what you did last summer. I don't know. I don't. I don't believe that was her. Uh, she is in several things. Uh, go ahead and discuss. Go on to the next. I'm going to look. I'm, again, I'm not a Jessica Bill fan, per se, but I believe she is married and has children with uh, Justin Timberlake. Interesting. OK. Um, the other birthday is March 4th, 1947. We have Gunnar Hansen, the original Leatherface. Um, Gunnar Hansen, of course, is fantastic in his role. Also, I'm just going to slip it in there. If today's your birthday, happy birthday. Um, That's right. And Jessica <laughs> Bill, yes, is is married to Justin Timberlake. There you go. And Gunnar Good. Hansen, of course, is no longer alive. Uh, yes. So, uh, but unfortunately, but uh, iconic in that role of Letterface. Of course, peace, peace, peace be with him in the beyond. Um, but uh, a couple of upcoming uh, movie anniversaries, movie birthdays, if you will. Uh, March fifth, nineteen forty-three, we have Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and March fifth, nineteen fifty-four, we have Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, both, of course, are some, I'm sure, of some of Dave's favorite uh, yes. <laughs> monster movies. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, that ties I, in. The creature from Black Lagoon ties into our next note. Absolutely. Um, in memoriam, we have, um, per, per, pardon me if I pronounce this incorrectly, uh, Riku Browning passed away on February 27th, 2023. Best known for his underwater stunt work and playing the Gill Man in Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. The last, the last remaining uh, actor or actress. To play in the uh, the original Universal Monster movies, to play any of the title characters, uh, last the uh, last living one, uh, and uh, man, it is it's heartbreaking when you know it's like you you when you lose that you kind of lost that 
that era. And, yeah. you know, I mean, Browning was, he does appear, he did, you know, did convention appearances right up to the end. He had convention appearances scheduled this year um, that, you know, fortunately, you know, won't happen now. But, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, that's, that's too bad. Uh, groundbreaking. His work, man, was, was unbelievable. I mean, the stuff he was doing under the, under, you know, it's easy to say his underwater stunt work. Yeah, he developed most of that, right? Because it didn't exist. That was, a lot of that was un, unprecedented. I mean, we're talking 1954. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, he was, I mean, he was developing a, a, a lot of those techniques that uh, I'm sure many of them are still used today. Well, well, he'll definitely be missed. Um, and that's crazy. He still is doing uh, appearances. I mean, he was born in 1930, uh, February mm-hmm. 16, 1930. Um, so that would have put him at what, 93 years old? Yeah, I, he just, I think he just had a birthday here recently. I think yeah. earlier in the month, I believe. Yep, February 16th, yep. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, he'll definitely be missed. Um, you know, and like you said, it's a whole generation of uh, creatures gone, but uh, here's to another generation of creatures. Yeah. But uh, new releases, as we mentioned, Megan Unrated is out on Peacock and Video On Demand. Uh, definitely check it out. Definitely worth, worth the watch if you didn't see it in theaters. Um, and an upcoming release, which actually I just learned about this yesterday. My wife showed me the trailer for this because I had no idea it was coming out. But we have Children of the Corn in theaters on March the 3rd. You heard that right. It is written and directed by Kurt Wimmer. The movie isn't a direct adaptation of King's original short story, but rather based on the mythology built within it. It is the 11th installment in the series, but it veers off in its own direction, focusing more on the mythos behind the children's uprising. So, um that sounds interesting. I actually saw it. It yeah. has some show times here. Um, it does look a little lower budget, in my opinion. But obviously, yeah. I'm, I'm no, I, I'm not afraid to watch a low budget movie. I've I've seen plenty of my time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just weird because it's like, it's one of those things that I remember there being something, some news coming out that oh yeah, there was going to be a new a new take on it or whatever. And it's like okay, and then it's just like all of a sudden oh yeah yeah it's, here it is it's coming out. And it just Ooh. it's like it's it's odd you know it's just. And I, I don't think it's got a, a huge release coming up, and so it'll be interesting. And, and again, I, I mean, I'm sure it'll be okay, but it's so hard that the original's so good. And yeah. um, and again, I know that they're they're saying this is not a direct retelling, so I'm curious to see what that means and, and everything else. But uh, it, you know, at some point, I don't know. I don't know if this will be a theater go for me, as much as I like Stephen King stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. And uh, you know, if I mean, again, if I'm gonna in a non-horror related thing. If I'm going to go see a movie this weekend coming out, uh, I'm probably going to go see Creed three <laughs> because <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of the Rocky franchise and the spinoffs and, and can't wait to see that movie. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll watch it obviously when, it, at least when it comes out in streaming or video on demand, but I don't know if that'll be a theater go for me. Yeah, me neither. Um, I, I think if I'm going to watch a movie this weekend, it's going to be Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumanium. I have not seen that movie yet. Yeah. I'm dying I haven't to watch it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's true. I do need to see that still too. And uh, what is it? There's like there's, oh yeah, never mind. It was Monica <laughs> mentioning to me the other day that there's a new Magic Mike movie out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Last like, Dance oh. or something like that. Yeah, well, good. Uh, obviously, because aren't they all like in their fifties and plus now? <laughs> I, I was I was gonna say Channing Tatum's in his forties, I think. <laughs> I mean, not knocking them because my God, look at them. I mean, you know, for their who you know, I'm curious. Is, is Kevin Nash in this one again? Because I don't even know. I mean, I mean, he was fairly immobile in the last one he's got bad knees and everything else i don't know what i don't know what he's gonna do but, yeah uh, i don't know if he's in this one or not um obviously i i am i'm am by no means a magic mike uh lore expert but um yeah i don't think I, he's in this one you know I, I i i'm sure i've seen the first one i don't know if i've seen i don't even know how many there are i don't think i've seen any others uh, obviously dance movies are not my thing i'm just not you know i mean I don't know if I've really cared for uh, you know a dance movie you know besides the original you know outside the past the original Footloose but uh, <laughs> oh wait I forgot I, I do I did love Breaking uh, Breaking was a great movie back in the day uh, a fun movie N- never heard of that so before before we get too far down on a rabbit hole of <laughs> wait you've never heard of Breaking but I've the whole world knows of of, but the whole world knows of Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo uh, that's like a that's like a, a whole joke. So you didn't you didn't know there reason, was an actual a breaking the first movie there was a breaking 
the only reason I know of like the joke of electric boogaloo is because of clerks. I use that phrase <laughs> so much. It's not even well, yeah. it's a ridiculous amount. And you got to know the context of your jokes. There was a movie called Breaking that came out, and it was in the boom of break dancing and the popularity. The first one was a I don't know for the time. It's obviously a dated movie, but it you know was a great. I don't want to say great. It was a fun movie for the time, uh, you know, and, and the pop culture references and everything else. Breaking Two was not a very good movie at all. <laughs> it was has become the butts of jokes of of of, of bad movies over the years, and it's it's kind of become that that trendsetter you know when you talk about bad movies uh, uh, you you throw that out almost as as the catch-all phrase for for bad things is, is you know break into electric boogaloo you, you know it's weird because like like you said it's so weird that like phrases like that will get put out there and it's like you could write a whole dissertation on like the the use of like that phrase in pop culture and like i could probably write a, a 10-page essay about that easily because yeah. I've never it's heard funny of breaking that, two. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that yeah, like you said, people are using because it's been you know it's been picked up in other other references, right? I mean, whether it be lot you see this lots with like you know the Simpsons or Family Guy or or something like that, where they they do these references and you know other generations or other people are, are, are picking it up from that, but not understanding the original context of it. It's 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 funny. So weird, so weird. Anyways, uh, before we get too far along on Electric Boogaloo, um, <laughs> let's dive into our review for this week. So when we come back, we will be reviewing the one, the only, Cocaine Bear. Listen to Their Screams is now a Fangoria collaborator. Get 20% off your order at shop.fangoria.com by using the promo code listen to screams at checkout. That is listen to number two and screams. Or you can click the link in the show notes. Okay, and we're back. We're now doing our review. We're reviewing Cocaine Bear. It was released by Universal in theaters now. Uh, it was released on February 24th. Uh, it is defined as an oddball group of cops, criminals, tourists, and teens converge in a Georgia forest where a huge black bear goes on a murderous rampage after unintentionally ingesting cocaine. That's starring <laughs> Carrie Russell, uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr., which, of course, is Ice Cube's son, uh, Ray Liotta in his last uh, – you know, film feature film. Uh, I, I read a thing where it said he literally had to come in and you know do some overdubs and some whatever you call it, vo- vocal corrections and things like that. I mean, this is literally just we're talking a couple weeks uh, before he died. And um, it was directed by Elizabeth Banks. Uh, it is partially based on a true story. However, no rampage truly took place, as the bear likely died in minutes after ingesting the cocaine. <laughs> um, and it, uh, in the movie, my God, the bear ingests a lot of cocaine. And I love the fact that they played up that this. <laughs> <laughs> the bear literally became an addict. I mean, yeah. he was seeking out the cocaine. And um, Jones in for that shit, man, constantly. And, and it was. And um, I have to say, I was I was excited to see this movie. I don't know why. I, I because I, I I I knew what to expect, right? I don't I don't put a lot of most of the time I don't put a lot of hype in movies, right? I don't I don't I don't try to oversell them in my head. Because my context is, if I go to a movie and spend two hours or whatever it is, and if I if I had a little bit of fun, if I enjoyed part of it, nine times out of ten, I'm I'm good, right? I'm I'm happy, right? I'm not expecting I have to go in there and see a groundbreaking movie. I just want to go in and have fun, and I want to go in there and not think about work for a couple hours or not think about whatever, you know, for a couple hours. I just want to kind of get lost in the movie in whatever way, whether it be a couple of laughs or a couple good kill scenes or whatever it is. And I knew this movie wasn't going to try to parlay itself into being some form of an Oscar, you know, nominated type movie. I knew this movie was going just to be fun. That's what it was shooting for. And knowing the cast, I thought, man, I I feel like it's going to deliver. And, um, so, so I was very excited to see this movie and, uh, I, I was just, I was super pumped. Could not wait to go see it. So, so I tell us, tell me what. You, here's first of all, before we get into it, before we discuss it, I did know, I noticed that Monica didn't go with me to see it. She was, she was busy. With the time I went to it, she was doing something else. Uh, so I, I went alone and saw it. I did notice that Kayla went with you and saw it. <laughs> I, I, I did notice that on social media, she put something referencing 
let's see if this is as stupid as it sounds or something to that effect. I, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Before we dive into our talk and our review, what did Kayla think of Cocaine Bear? Just just in a nutshell. Um, so prior to going to see it, let me let me preface by saying that typically when we go watch movies, we typically go watch our movies on Tuesdays. Um, generally speaking, it's cheaper because AMC has like their discount nights. Also, I work until, yeah. uh, you know, I'm in Florida. We're in Central Standard Time, so I work until 4 p.m. typically. And so we can usually catch like a 5, 30, 6 o'clock, 6, 30 movie pretty easily um, if I get off work right away. So I told her, hey, we need to go watch this movie. I'm recording it for the podcast. You know, it's, it should be pretty funny. And she initially was like, I don't want to go watch Cocaine Bear. She's like, you know – she was like, you know, I, I, you know, she doesn't like me going to the movies by myself. I don't know why. I, it might be like, a, like a fear that I'm gonna get like kidnapped or something, which is very possible. But she was like, okay, I'll go with you. She's like, I, but I think this movie is gonna be stupid as hell. Um, even up until like we were watching the trailers, which first of all, this movie had a shit ton of trailers. I mean, an obnoxious amount of trailers. The three yeah, red band about, trailers. <laughs> yeah, talk about this. What what trailers did you see? I think I think I saw. I think I, when I saw it, I had two. One of them was a Red Band trailer for, I think it's called Strays, the dog movie. Yeah. Did you see that trailer? Yes, Which, I did. by the way, fucking looks hilarious. I, I'm telling you, I know it has nothing to do with horror movies, but I was fucking rolling just watching the damn trailer on that movie. When it got to the – and again, I'm not going to – I'm not spoiling anything because it's out there in the trailer. When it got to the point that the dog wanted to get revenge on the owner and saying <laughs> it was going to go by – or going to go – what did he say? Uh, I'm going to – what did what he, how he put it? He's like, what he loves most. Yeah, really what, what he, he loves, loves most. most. And they're like, what's that? He goes, I'm going to bite his dick off. And I'm yep. like, it was so matter of fact. And it's Will Ferrell doing the voice. So it's just, he has that matter of fact delivery. I was, I was rolling watching that trailer. Um, <laughs> I don't remember, I don't remember what the other trailer was I saw. Uh, the what the, the other, other, yeah, because there were, there were a bunch of trailers before it. But I mean, the ones that stuck out to me is they had a red, the red band trailer for um, the dog movie, the red band trailer for. Oh shit! What was it? Uh, Evil Dead Rise. Um, See, I, they didn't have that in my theater. I got you. There was a there's another one. I cannot remember what the other Red Band trailer was, and there were a few other trailers too. Honestly, I, I I'll see trailers, and unless it really wows me, oh, Bo is Afraid was one of them. Um, oh yeah, that was that weird. That's that. Now that wasn't the other trailer. I don't, anyway, it seems what, the only reason I bring this up is because it seems like whatever the other movie was. I don't know. It seemed like it fit our, our genre here, and I wanted to mention it, and I can't remember. That's – oh, well. Anyway, go ahead. Get back to the Kayla right up to the point of you're watching trailers. Absolutely. So uh, right up to the point where we're watching the trailers, and and, I, and obviously, like, you know, I, I know my wife. I've been with her for a while. I, I know when she's unamused. And so <laughs> this entire time, she's, she's unamused. I, I know that she doesn't necessarily want to be there, but she's there to support me. And we start watching this movie. And, and the very first thing that happens is you see a, a, a hitchhiker just get dismantled. I mean, mm-hmm. it just insanely. And then it starts going along. And I think the point that broke her was when the kids started doing cocaine. <laughs> I, 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 because they started doing cocaine, and, so she, I, and I hear her laugh. And I look over <laughs> at her, and she immediately goes straight face. Just, just, um, she's like, I'm not going to feed this motherfucker. She, I'm gonna, she was no selling. <laughs> <laughs> she was no selling. And – and so we watch this entire movie. I, I'm laughing, having a good time. We get through it. At the end, we're walking out of the theater, and I was like, "You enjoyed the movie, didn't you?" And she's like, "Okay, yeah, it was pretty good." So she started out not amused, did not want to be there. She left the theater a fan of Cocaine Bear. So <laughs> I'll tell you, to me, that summarizes this movie in a nutshell, right? Because I think this movie is fun enough to turn anybody. Oh, and yeah. and I and you hit on a point that's very important to me that I that I wanted to talk about here in a bit and that that I, that I wanted to just make sure I discuss I had a note to discuss the two kids in this movie made oh, the movie and they were amazing so let's so let's dive into this this movie again right you have to suspend some belief right because uh, like we talked about earlier no bear that's ingesting this much <laughs> cocaine is going to live no. and, and do this. First of all, the cast was spectacular in this. They were all they were all great. They while there was there was some goofiness and there was humor, they kept they kept at least kept one toe 
and, and and kind of reality based a little bit where you didn't feel that they were overselling it right and um right. and the bear looked great um i'm sure you know that's that i'm guarantee it's all fixed right and, and everything i you know whatever clearly was a fix but it looked it looked good um it had some some fun some fun kill spots for me uh some <laughs> some very humorous things it had some sus- you know some suspenseful moments the the, the <laughs> O'Shea Jackson Jr was great in it too he was 100%. he was spectacular um i i i have liked him in many things several things i've seen him in i i became a fan of his with this one it was just he was great um <laughs> just he was spectacular i i like the teenage kids that were the switchblade guys <laughs> Oh that were attacking God. people in the park, especially the one that stuck around through the whole movie. Yep. And uh, was with him. It was because he was so. I don't know. He was just. He kept this. This lighthearted view on things, even though he talked about clearly having whatever a bad childhood and this and that and 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 whatever else. And and he's <laughs> been robbing people by switchblade in this park, and they're <laughs> he being attacked by this bear and blah blah blah. And he's still just so. I don't know, so lighthearted through it, and and trying to he's dishing out, trying to dish out advice and talk to people and, and everything. It's just cracked me up. The one, <laughs> there's so many scenes that just made me crack. The one, just stupid stuff too, like the one police officer that came from wherever there, right, and uh, climbed up on the gazebo to get the bag of cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was laughing so hard because he was like. Oh, that's that's a long way down. And they're like, well, how'd you get up here? <laughs> well, I jumped over from the tree and messed my hip up when I did that, and I didn't. And it's just the whole context of he got into this situation and then couldn't figure out how to get back out of it. Just, just cracked, and he shot the guy's fingers off because yep. he he wouldn't move. And then the bear shows up, and it's I don't just everything about it that cracked me. I don't know I don't know why it was just so humor. I, I think what it is is because everybody's been in a position like that. Right. Not not necessarily on it because you do something or you're trying to do a project or do whatever and, and you get into the this, what you think is the, the right idea. Right. And, and, and how you're going to approach this. And then you get into it and you're like, oh, crap. Oh, what fuck. have I done here? <laughs> and how am I going to get out of this with the least? So everybody's been in that weird position. Um, so anyway, I, I'm kind of rambling here. But um, so I give me some of your feedback now on, on what you what you were thinking about cocaine bears. You watched it. We'll dive in more. Oh, man. I mean, first of all, this movie, it's like sometimes you watch horror movies and you're just like, I just don't know how these people like live. I don't know how these people survive. They, they're they not acting rationally. But like every single person in this movie acted proportionate to what was happening. And that just made it so much better. Like this kid's like losing his shit. And he's like. Oh, he's like, this is the kind of stuff that stays with a man. You know, he's like, you know, clearly traumatized by seeing a bear just dem- like literally just rip people apart. I mean, you have the park ranger who who carries a gun who probably shouldn't be carrying a gun who <laughs> that's oh, my God, the scene where she actually shoots that kid in the head. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry. And the other kid's like, you're sorry. And he's like. like like these are all justifiable reactions like i mean it's just so traumatic and the whole scene where the emt shows up and like you know they're trying to help but then like they just get again absolutely killed (laughs) speaking of speaking of the emts the one the male emt with the mustache is that the guy that does all the videos online of the customer service, like working in the store or like working in a, uh, what do you call it? I can't remember what it is. He, he talks about working in the store. He does those goofy, everybody's seen them where he's like, uh, what is it? Where he talks about like a customer approaches him with a weird question. He gives them this real smart ass answer. You know, he's like, whatever. It's like, uh, ah, do you know um, what I'm talking about? I think, I, yeah, that's exactly who it is. Cause I just pulled him up on YouTube that's so um, odd to me that it's that guy. Uh, I, what, I, what came first for this guy? Was he an actor first, or did he have these viral videos so they put him in this bit part in this movie? So, I mean, did he transition over and, and start auditioning for stuff? And it's so odd geez. to me that I saw him and I'm like, where do I know that guy from? And I'm See, like, he weird. does those videos because it's like those videos of uh, 
uh, what is it? It's like, I don't know. It's just like these, I can't even describe the videos. It's like he works in a Ikea or something like that. And um, it's like customers asking him dumb questions and he like reacts with this real smart ass way. And yeah, he, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to like a, a customer walks in. They're like, oh, I'm going to go on Yelp and tell everybody yeah. that, you know, you're oh, yeah. the worst place ever. And he's like, tell them. Do it. Yeah, I go ahead. Do you think <laughs> yeah. I care? I work. I make minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, you think this is what I want to do with my life? And he's like, <laughs> oh and I'm God. like, I was watching. I'm like, is that that guy? It, it is. And I didn't realize that was that guy until you said that. But I'm like, I swear I recognize him from somewhere. But yeah, geez. That's awesome. So I looked it up. He, he's he's wrote like a short film before, but he's not had any major acting credits. So I'm thinking he maybe knew not not that he knew somebody, but maybe that like he had like an in and like they're like, oh, yeah, you're pretty funny. Let's put you in the movie because he was perfect. He was perfect yeah. in his role. I thought he was great. Um, but no, I mean, literally this 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 was just like, in my opinion, this movie had all of these like disconnected stories, but like it worked perfectly. Like Elizabeth Banks. I mean, literally hats off to you. I mean, I, yeah. I love Elizabeth Banks. I think she's hilarious. I think she's a really great actress. Um, you know, I've seen all the Pitch Perfect movies, and she, you know, directed I think those movies as well. Um, and this movie was a, a perfect portrayal of her comedy style. Yes, absolutely. That was what I was gonna say, and and that, I think that was part of the reason why my wife decided to come because she loves Elizabeth Banks. But like, this is just so so unexpected, and oh my god, it was just so much stuff. I'm trying. There was something that was really funny. Oh, at the very end when O'Shea Jackson uh, Jr.'s character was like, you know, he lost his fingers and yeah. the dog starts eating something. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, God. Oh, no. Well, yeah. what the they're going to be able to put him yeah. back on. Yeah, anyway. they were going to put him back on anyway. And, uh, oh, oh and, and the one teenage kid gets away with a bag of the cocaine. Yeah. And he, and he he gets picked up by a truck that has like goats in the back or something. And he throws the bag in the back, starts to get in the truck, and then goes back and grabs the bag because. You know, in his mind, he's thinking, oh, I don't want cocaine goats. And uh, <laughs> it just it just cracked me up. And I mean, this proportionately, movie, I think the goats would have been better. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, never know. But uh, this movie evoked all the same feelings for me that lots of, of the cheesy 80s horror that I like uh, evokes because it's 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 fun. It's got it had a little bit of cheese and camp to it. Uh, but it, it it was just everybody had these little stories going. Right. Because here's the thing. You think to yourself. Why are all these people in this situation to be in this park <laughs> with a bear high on cocaine? And each of them had, in their minds, a valid reason, right? The one lady yeah. was go, the, the one girl wanted to go paint, paint the waterfall, right? That's, that was a, a point from the very beginning of the movie, and she drug her friend with her. The the mom found out that she skipped school to do this, so she went to get her her kid. The 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 one guys were sent by the the drug guy to get the cocaine that had been dumped because they were on the hook. He was on the hook for it. He later shows up because, again, he's on the hook for it, so he feels like he has to be there. You know, the, the park ranger was clearly, you know, it was her job, and she was there, and she was taking the one guy. I mean, everybody was there for a reason. And and they had these things going on, and it all, it all kind of came together at the end, right, this meeting at the end. And it's one of those things you, you hear a lot about in movies and stories and everything else. Some of the best villains, uh, you, you have a kernel almost of, of sympathy for them, right? That right. You, 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 not, I mean, I, yes, they're, they're evil for evil's sake, but some of them that are real, kind of relatable in their mind, they, they, they're, what they're doing is right. And, and, and th yes, this bear was eating people and killing people and whatever, but this bear, <laughs> this bear didn't cause this situation. Right. It, it got caught in it. Um, it was very primal. It liked the feeling of what the cocaine was doing. <laughs> and then ended up switching to a it's the mother bear defending her her cubs and you know so um i don't think you can classify the bear as a villain in this even though she was you know killing people right. uh, but the the movie so and, and and what i mentioned earlier about the supernatural connection the 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 one boy the main boy in it right the blonde haired kid that that you mentioned uh, that you know said he would change a man and did the cocaine he was in an episode of supernatural and, uh, the kid was. The kid was, yes, yes. Okay. And, uh, what, what episode? Yeah. <laughs> I um, gotta hear this. Well, I don't know what it was called or what season. It's again for people that are not fans of Supernatural, just stick with me for a moment. It was one of the episodes after their mother Mary comes back, 
and when she's first starting to hunt and it's very awkward and they're very protective of her and she's trying to adjust, right? They go on this thing um, where there's a house where um, people are hearing babies cry and they go in and there's this creepy old doll and then there's something that's killing them. Yeah. And, uh, and there's the little boy. There's, there's kids that are captured. That they're, they're trapped there as ghosts. And it, it winds up in the end. There, there's someone killed the kids there. The kids are not the ones that are killing people. There's someone else is, and the kids are just victims. And uh, but the one little boy that keeps trying to communicate with Mary, and uh, and she keeps going back, and th- that's him. Okay, okay, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I, again, I know if you're not a fan of supernatural, people don't watch it, that. None of that means nothing. But anyway, I I feel like it's like a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon thing for me that I so much <laughs> so much stuff I could tie back to supernatural. But yeah, that kid was in. Because I saw him and I'm like, yeah, that's that kid. I know it is. He's it, the timing's right, the age is right, and I looked it up. Yeah, it's him. But uh, that's crazy. but he was great. He was great in it. He he had some of the the <laughs> where he's trying to <laughs> trying to parlay himself off because he's clearly trying to press this girl a little bit, right? You can tell he's probably got a little bit of a crush on her, and uh, she's like, uh, <laughs> when they first find the cocaine, and he's like, oh yeah, I do cocaine. And he's like, what? <laughs> Who do you do? It's like, I don't know, whatever he says. Oh, yeah, I, I do it with Ricky on the street or whatever. <laughs> and so she, like, pulls him out. It's like, here, do it then. <laughs> and it's just like, it's just, oh, it's so funny. Um, yeah. They, it, honestly, I was going to say, one of the things I was going to mention about Cocaine Bear that I feel like it, it, it kind of, because here's the deal. When I was going into it, obviously, like, you don't really know what to expect. But, like, in so many ways, this movie was, like, it, it really – exceeded my expectations I, I gotta be honest like i just i have to say that as as a movie about a bear that does cocaine it was very good <laughs> i mean it was it literally you wouldn't think a movie about a bear doing cocaine would be good but it was just mwah, chef's kiss <laughs> it was completely it was i say it all the time but it is it is my bottom line so many times for a movie it was such a fun movie to watch. Yes. I didn't absolutely. have to go in. I, I didn't have to overthink. I didn't have to I didn't have to try to, you know, follow fifty plot lines. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy movies like that. But I I, I do like to see sometimes just a movie where I can just sit down, shut off the brain, and just and just have a have fun. Have a good time. And and this this was it. I will say that this will this will be a movie that I will I will rewatch several times. Over the years, I just I, I just feel it. I don't I don't think it's going to lose its interest to me. No, I, I don't think it's going <laughs> to lose its humor to me. It's it, it just such a fun movie. I now, genuinely I want to see a I want to see a blooper reel from this movie. I, I yeah, <laughs> there's got to be some good stuff. But uh, now as we as we as we transition over here to rate this, I do have to be realistic though, and saying again, I, I can't put it up there, and I say this too. I can't put it up as a masterpiece or that it's groundbreaking. But knowing our baseline on on where we stand with the movie that we enjoy, right? We're typically, if it's a three, you know, it was a good movie. We we enjoyed it, whatever else. And typically in our context, you get to four, you're talking the great, right? The cream of the crop type stuff. So I, I don't think I can put it up there on a four screams level, but I do think this is a very solid three and a half screams for me. And I had to give it some considerable thought on could I justify giving it four? But I just I just don't think that in my heart, as fun as the movie was, and as much as I, I don't really have a lot of I don't really have a lot of critique of it per se, I you know, I can't say that it was it was a spectacular movie that is uh, that is, you know, over the top whatever. It, it, but it was a super fun movie. So yeah, I, I I think I would have to agree. Um, three and a half st- screams out of five is definitely where I would also put this movie. Um, even my wife agreed with me that this is a three and a half out of five, so we will probably never see this movie on a wife's rebuttal, thank God. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it definitely, like you said, it, it's not some groundbreaking, like, oh man, this is the next generation of horror. This isn't Skin of Marink. This isn't you know, a movie that I would put on a pedestal, you know, because for instance, I think the only two movies that I can think of at the top of my head that I gave a four 
are The House That Jack Built and uh, Skinnerbrink. I can't think of any other movie I, that we've given a four. Maybe Terrifier 2. Well, Terrifier 2, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think that this is a Terrifier 2, Skinnerbrink level movie. You know what I mean? But it is a solid three and a half out of five. It was thoroughly entertaining. It was very, very funny. The acting in this was on point. All of the actors did a fantastic job. And I mean, it just, oh man, just so, so good. I am very glad I spent the money to go watch this. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, yeah, again, I can't, I mean, I recommend it so much to go watch it. Because again, if you enjoy horror, if you enjoy, you know, if you enjoy a slasher type, you know, with some blood and some gore, with you know, a little bit of humor sprinkled in there, this is this is the movie for you. It is it is enjoyable. It is fun. Um, it, it is one of those movies I literally came out of, and I'm like, man, I I I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it again, just because I was I was cracking up in so many parts, and and, and everything else. It was it was a fun fun movie. Um, uh, well done. I, I fully enjoyed it. And um, man, again, not not to not to be redundant, but just talking about. How, how good this year is shaping up to be so far. I mean, we are just at the beginning of March. Uh, we have, you know, we've had Megan. We've had Cocaine Bear now. You know, Skin and Marine, you know, that we enjoyed, you know, really getting its footing this year. And, um, and and here we are, you know, a week away from Scream 6. And, I mean, again, we're, we're just coming <laughs> out of the, you know, into the finishing up the first quarter of the year. Yeah. And and that's where we stand already. Uh, so it is, it's remarkable. It's exciting. Um, and it, 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 it builds a lot of optimism in me uh, going forward. So, but, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a cocaine bear. Highly, highly recommended, uh, three and a half screams for us. But again, that's, man, that's an understatement. It's, yeah. it's a, if, if it was based purely just on the enjoyable fun factor, it, uh, it's a five screen movie, but oh, you yeah. have to, you have to factor in, you know, all the aspects, but just pure fun. Oh, uh, hell it's, it's a great movie. Uh, go, go see it. And, and, and you know, don't overthink it. It's it's a bear high on cocaine, you know. Just don't overthink <laughs> it. So, oh man. Um, but uh, but I'm super excited now that we've kind of we've wrapped up Cocaine Bear and we're looking forward because now we're we're officially we're diving into our scream season here. And yeah. the next two episodes are scream centric. Uh, next episode again, we will discuss the entire scream franchise, do a review. We're gonna do a countdown of our consensus favorites of the five uh, movies that are already out, uh, and we will give a scream six preview. Uh, we will discuss our favorite openings in Scream movies, uh, and we're just we're just talking all Scream and Ghostface next week, uh, because we will be right on the precipice of seeing that movie of Scream Six. We will be excited, and and frankly, that's just that's all we're going to want to talk about is, is Scream, the Scream franchise. And then of course the week after that will be our review of Scream Six. So I'm I'm super pumped. I'm super excited. I am so ready to see this movie. Uh, I I'm so hopeful that I'm not overselling this in my head. <laughs> um, but, uh, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, I, the, you know, again, we'll, we'll talk about it next week, but of, of the five already out there, there's not, there's not one of the five that I haven't enjoyed in one way or another. I, I clearly have some that are favorites of the other, but I've enjoyed them all uh, to one way or another. And, and again, we'll discuss that next episode. So, uh, make sure you subscribe to us. You don't want to miss that because I'm sure that a lot of our listeners are just as pumped, uh, for scream six and are such, as, as, as big a fans of the scream franchise as we are. So make sure you subscribe to us so that you don't miss an episode and follow us on social media because there'll be lots of scream goodness that we'll be sharing and discussing in the coming two weeks. So, Ike, before we close up and get out of here, um, <laughs> anything uh, you want to say? Uh, I think it should be abundantly apparent. Um, but please, kids, parents, anyone who might be listening, please do not feed cocaine in the animals, including but not limited to black bears. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and children, if you find a block of a weird powdery <laughs> substance in the wild, uh, don't just slice that bitch open and, and take a big. <laughs> let's, let's not talk about the fact that the girl had the had the knife and just right. was like like putting out a big a blade full of it like she was a pro uh, with that blade. You know, I mean, just uh, you, you know how it says, you know, don't do drugs, kids. You remember the old eighties eighties <laughs> spots with the you know the hot skillet and this is your brain and this is your brain's on drugs with the frying egg. Uh, Cocaine will fuck you up. Uh, so, <laughs> Amen. Uh, yeah, so definitely do not feed it to any animals. And and if you're, you know, if you're trying to smuggle cocaine across the border and you go to parachute out of a a, a, a wreck, a plane that's wrecking, uh, when you go to parachute, please account for the additional weight that carrying a bag full of cocaine uh, will cause for you because um, 
it is a true story that the guy did jump out of a plane with a bag full of cocaine to shoot did not properly open and he did fall into a driveway and die yep. <laughs> uh, in the in the real life part of the story and it's it's you know the, the the theory is that well you know the parachute and everything else was not made and accounted for that all that extra weight of the blocks of cocaine he was trying to <laughs> salvage so so if you have to jump out of a that next time <laughs> yes if you have to jump out of a uh, of a plane that's on the en route to wrecking I just save yourself, and eh, don't, don't, there's always more cocaine in the world. Just save yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so let's close the door on our animal episode and our cocaine bear and uh, our best attempts to talk drugs. That's, I mean, that's about as good as we can get. You know, we're not real, not real versed in that in that degree in that area. So. Uh, Negative. But again, <laughs> next week. That's right. We next week we dive deep into the Scream franchise, and we're gonna we're gonna play in that pool for two weeks. We are super excited. Uh, we're going to clearly one of our favorite horror franchises and uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. It's going to be fun. I can't wait, uh, but we do. We have to wait a week. So until then, wherever you go and whatever you do, be good, be safe and have many pleasant nightmares. <laughs>